So it's really a big effort to come here. Today is working and then it's raining and uh, big an effort to come here. And so I won't hold you long, I won't talk too long, don't talk for two hours and then you all go to sleep, you know, talking too much. I remember uh, that we, we have, a, we, we have a, we one of our supporters that she used to come very often, then we got a little boy, a little boy, uh, 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 Jasper, he's about four years old. Then he, one day he go up to Ajam Ram, Ajam Ram, you're talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> talking too much. It's like you know, our job is just talking. You know, yes, the topic like uh, topic like enlightenment is a, a natural process because I, I normally you know when I you know come to teaching a retreat and people come to me ask about the practice I find people trying very hard, too hard. <laughs> You know, the thing that enlightenment is something that you can you can do something, you know, you can you can make it happen, you know. You can't, you can't make it happen. You know, you have to put in the causes, you know. They put in the causes. When you put in the right causes, the causes is say things will happen by itself. You know, it's just like the ball you start to roll, you start you have to start it rolling, isn't it? The moment you start it, you will keep going, isn't it? But sometimes people try so hard. I find the people, you know, sometimes people say to me, oh, I'm sitting for two hours, then I feel very tired. I say, you shouldn't be tired, you know, because they try to focus, try to focus on the breath. But because you have to be in the right causes, the, the condition is there. When the condition is there, things happen, you know. You don't even have to, you know, you, you don't, you don't, most people try to make it happen, you know, when they read all the books, you know, oh, yeah, you, 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 you go into this stage, you know, then they will start to think, how can I get there? I did that also when I was, <laughs> I did that also, but like, you know, you read all this about meditation and you start to think, you know, how I get there, you know, you, you try to make it happen. No, you, that is a, it's a natural process, you know, it's actually, it's very slow, you know, the first of all, you have to de develop enough clarity to be able to see even your underlying tendency. We can't see your underlying tendency. Sometimes when you keep reinforcing your underlying tendency, you, you just go round and round, you know, you keep feeding it, it can never come up. Because uh, you, like we have certain underlying tendency, sometimes when you, the, the problem is when we use will, willpower, too much willpower, so we try to make it happen, actually we reinforce the underlying tendency. But we can't see that, you know, it's like a spiral, you can't come up. That's how we start in the sangsara, you know, ups and down and go round and round, you know, because you, you, you keep doing the same thing, what happened? You got the same results, but then we start to blame others, you know, for our problem, our, you know, our, our, our suffering, you know, because of, you know, because of, you know, we, we tend to complain and blame, blame others for our problem, but we don't see that actually we are part of it. We are the one we, we feed it and we can't see that. So what is underlying tendency? And underlying tendency is that, you know, it's just like, for example, like people used to say to me that, oh, I have no anger. Then I was thinking, well, you, you said you have no anger, that means you are anagami or fully enlightened. <laughs> because even though this moment you, have, you, you don't get angry, doesn't mean that you have no anger, your underlying tendency anger is that then given the condition, you will flare up. I remember early days when I was in, uh, I mean before I came to the monastery, I, I say it, uh, um, uh, Thailand Vapanana Chat. So one of my job is that morning I used to go and clean the Sima Hall. So normally we have to wake up three o'clock and then six o'clock, you know, I wake up quarter to, to three and then quarter to six I go to clean the Sima Hall. Then one of the very sad satisfying job I, f I find it's very satisfying because after cleaning you see the whole cinema very clean you feel very happy you know and very peaceful very calm and then one day after I finish cleaning you know the floor is so standing there admiring my, 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 my job you know so nice one lady came in with her shoes on and the shoes print all over I can tell you how I feel that moment. I feel like I want to strangle her. <laughs> then 
I realized that, you know, I feel, you know, sometimes we tend to overestimate ourselves. We think that I'm so peaceful, so calm. Because the condition is known that not there. No one press a button. No one trigger you. The trigger is not there. You think that it's not. The underlying tendency is there. We are unable to see that. So that's why you, only you be able to develop enough clarity, you see. So sometimes how you react to things, sometimes how you keep feeding your defilements. Sometimes we don't even know that we're feeding it. Actually, the practice itself is very simple, but it's not easy, but it's very simple. Like I, I see sometimes people like, you know, that they, they, they think that's uh, uh, too simple. And then people like, like you know, that, that like, you know, any, anything that they don't understand, they think that is profound, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like, like the Buddha said, if a peep, if someone really understand the Dharma, you can you can explain to anyone, even a bartender, whoever you can explain in a very plain, simple language. You don't have to use this profound word. I mean, it sounds sounds good, but doesn't mean anything, you know, isn't it? That like, like like the Buddha said, you know, like like you know, it's like someone asked, oh, he, he like like. Like it just sound profound, but means nothing. And then like someone's just saying that oh my 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 wife is so beautiful, the the most beautiful person in the world. And who is this person? How she look like? Don't know. But using all the words like, you know, sounds profound, but means nothing. Is empty. It's the same thing. Like if we don't understand, that is not profound, isn't it? So they say sometimes we we understand. They say it's very important that you know it come from. Your right understanding. They, people try too hard, you know. Sometimes they say I keep telling people, especially like teaching a retreat, like to 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 the beginners. I I normally try to keep it very simple. Sometimes simple is good. And then I I, I notice that those beginners, sometimes beginners get better meditation than those you know that that so called very experienced, you know. <laughs> Because actually the less they know, they just very naturally, you know, they just follow instruction. You ask them to sit, okay, you know, then very easily, you know, they, they, they get, you know, they, 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 they easy to meditate. They said we always said that go back to the beginner's, uh, beginner's heart, you know, because sometimes our uh, mind get complicated. Sometimes we thinking too much, so, you know, thinking of, you know, how to get enlightened. You know, <laughs> whether this way, sometimes you keep thinking, oh, maybe I'm having too much anger. Okay, I must practice metta. So, okay, I will sit there, I will radiate loving kindness. May you be well and happy. Then you're really hoping your hand, your fist. May I be well and happy, may I be well and happy. <laughs> Actually, the pure loving kindness is come from your purity. If you are pure, you're naturally kind. It's a purity, isn't it? Because when, when, we, we, when, when we're being unskillful, it's because of our defilements, anger, jealousy, you know, greed. That leads us to being un, unskillful, you know, all this committees unwholesome act. But as, as we purify our, our mind, you know, we have less and less defilement. Actually, it's naturally, you're naturally kind. You look at children, they're, they're naturally kind, isn't it? Because they have the, they have the, they have the purity. It's natural. Then, of course, as they grow older, and then they have more defilements, they get naughty, isn't it? You know, it's just natural, you know. It's just a natural process, you know. And the, the Buddha's again and again stress, actually, it's a, it's, a gradual, it's a gradual training, you know. Because it, it's just like, our, our defilements, you know, when, whenever, when it's just our defilements, each time we react to our defilements, we reinforce. You know, we reinforce that tendency becomes stronger. And then, but if, even if we don't react, we don't feed it, it's, the tendency is still there. Why? It's just like, you know, you be accumulate this uh, uh, energy. It's just a ball. If you keep, continue to kick, the ball, the ball will spin. That is when you react, you're giving more energy, it spin. Even though you stop kicking, stop reacting, you know, it still spin. But eventually, if you continually, continuously not to feed it, eventually it runs out of energy, isn't it? It will spin, become slowly, slower and slower. Eventually it will stop. 
But the problem is sometimes that you know sometimes we, we, we our mindfulness you know is stronger, we be able to see then we don't feel it, and then sometimes we feel it, isn't it? Sometimes we we uh, we aware of that, and then sometimes we, our mindfulness is stronger, we aware we don't feel it. But sometimes our mindfulness you know because. The mindfulness is uh, the, is don't have the I mean it's not don't have the evenness you know. Sometimes we 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 stronger and then a bit weak and stronger a bit weak you know. Like like someone someone enlightened they are more like they have the evenness, you know, very steady, you know, not ups and down. And then of course when your 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 mindfulness is strong, you be able to see that. Then your mindfulness is weak, you don't see, you feel it again. It's just like you you three 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 step forward and then you two and a half step backward, or three four step forward and three step backward. But sometimes maybe three step forward and three step backward. You know, sometimes we go back and forth, back and forth a little bit. But oh, it's fine. Even sometimes with that, you still have in, in progress because sometimes you might have you know three, three step, uh, four step forward, and then you three and a half step backward. At least you know you have half and half a step progress. Actually, this is how it's very gradual. But sometimes people think that they can use willpower to make it happen. You know, to get enlightened faster. Now the days they have all this fast track. You know, okay, I you know, you can't because it's natural. Like you know, like the the Buddha said, it's natural. You don't even have to wish for it. Like if you are a virtuous person, you know, it's naturally you have no remorse, isn't it? It's happened naturally. It's naturally when when you are someone virt you are a virtuous person, so you have no remorse. You don't have to wish that oh may I have no remorse because you are virtuous because the the you put the 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 condition is there. You put in the causes. And then naturally, when you have no remorse, you have the gladness. You feel you feel happy. You feel good about yourself, isn't it? And then you have the 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 pity, sukha, joy, and the happiness. And when you're happy, you feel, when you're happy, you're more relaxed, isn't it? Your your body, you know, your body feel peace, calm when you're happy. So when you're angry, your body you can feel, you know, your body's burning, isn't it? And you feel very tight. But then, when when you're happy, you feel relaxed, you know. Then when when we become peaceful, your mind becomes still. And then naturally, when your mind becomes still, that is where that is where your wisdom. You be able to see things, have more clarity. You be able to see things more clearer, you know. You have more clarity. It's just like, your when your mind is confused, it's just like you know. It's just like it's just like you know. It's just like you go on top to the mountain, and when it is very foggy, you can't see your way. The same thing. Your mind is confused. It's just foggy, you know. But then they say it's it's a it's a natural process. It's a natural process. You have to put in the causes. You can't you can't really use willpower to make it happen. Sometimes the 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 harder you try, the worse, isn't it? I remember I remember there was a lady. She going through a divorce, and then she said to me that you know that because she going through the divorce, and I don't want to think of my 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 ex husband. So then she keep herself fully occupied, like so that I don't have time to think about him. Then then she said somehow no matter how hard, she still think of him. Then I, and I told her I said what's the problem if you think of him. I say it's okay when you think of him. Well, you know, it's interesting. I still think of him. It will stop very quickly. The more you force yourself not to think of him, you think more, isn't it? Sometimes you try not to think, you think more, isn't it? But that's why you, that's why you accept that. Come to place of acceptance. It's okay, you know. That's why the secret of being happy. Actually, you be able to come to place of acceptance, not fighting people, fighting too much. You know, it's okay. Sometimes we not always bright and beautiful. Sometimes we're a bit grumpy. Okay, yes, this is how I feel. And then it stop, isn't it? You just acknowledge that, recognize that, acknowledge that. Yeah, this is how I feel. They stop. But the more you think that it's wrong, I shouldn't feel this way. It's terrible. It's bad because this is how we judge ourselves. We judge our experiences, and then we have we identify ourselves how we should experience, how how we should be, and sometimes also we not only not only we 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 judge ourselves, we impose on other, you know, we impose our ideas on other, 
you know how they sh you know how people should behave you know and 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 very easily we we, we easily we impose the idea without knowing that but we always think that we are so we 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 are, we are, we are I'm, i really care for you i love you that's why you know i'm you know you have done something wrong it's not right you know that's why i always tell people kindness is more important than being right sometimes like you know like someone if someone make a mistake you know that is the last thing you should do, you know, to keep discipline that person, you shouldn't do that. Actually, it's quite damaging, you know. That's why I always, you know, that's, it's okay, you know, you acknowledge that this is what you've done and then you move on. Sometimes whatever we experience in our life, is not good or bad, it's not right or wrong, it's just part of our life. But sometimes I used to hear people say, oh, if I, if I would, if I would have to know it earlier, I wouldn't have done this, you know. And 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 you know, there's always, you know, when you look back and I used to tell people, I, I never, you know, I throughout my life when I look back, I never regret whatever I've done in my past because I look back in my past and my level of wisdom is there. <laughs> I only know that much, isn't it? I don't know better. You know, that sometimes you come to a place of acceptance, accepting that, yeah, my level is there. So accepting where we are in life, then you're happier. We don't fight, you know. But people fight, fight too much, you know, that they, they judge themselves, they judge others, and they create suffering for themselves and also suffering for others, you know. And I, I remember when I was a uh, uh, Anagarika, I remember one day, and then after, because we're quite restricted, not like now, we have internet, no internet, so we, we, we phone call. Phone call also, you have buy, buy a card, you know, buy a card, you have to call the number to connect overseas, you know, and also you can only call a certain time, you know. It's very, not like, like now, it's very easy. Now the nuns is so easy, they can get into it, even though they need to ask. Even though they need to ask permission to use internet, but I always trust them. I never <laughs> ask them. <laughs> the reason why I do that is that I trust them so that, that they have more complete. I mean, actually, you trust them is easier. If you try sometimes, the, the, the harder you, you try to, you know, like put a CCTV to check what they are doing, <laughs> actually worse, you know. But sometimes we have, TV, we have human t a CCTV. Sometimes people will come and tell me <laughs> what, what this way, what this other way. Sometimes I don't have to go out, you know. People will come and tell me <laughs> what's happening, you know, what's happening behind the back. So this is sometimes it just. Uh, uh, before I came, you know, and my so so I just you know talked to uh, one of my the more the senior nun. So I said on my way, this is what you should do and things like that. And then she told me, when you're away, people will ask for all sorts of things. <laughs> when when I'm there, they don't dare to ask. You say, you know, oh, last minute, when the appointment here, when to go out, go there. When you when you when you're here, no. When you uh, when you're away, that's happening. <laughs> I, I remember that after that, after that, I, I spoke to them. I was thinking, you know, oh, you know, my sibling uh, shouldn't do this thing. Da, da, da. And then when I went back to my good team, the whole night, my, my, my mind is just like playing the record again and thinking about that, how wrong the person, how wrong she is, da, 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 and go on and, and really, really disturb. Then suddenly I just stopped and I asked myself, actually, and I ask myself, and I ask myself, actually, you don't love her at all. If I truly, if you truly love a person, you love the person as a person is, isn't it? No matter what the person has done, then I realize that actually I attach to my own views much more than I love that person. You know, but sometimes we, we use the excuse that I love you, you know, I care for you. But actually, no, you 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 attach to your own views more. <laughs> then we, we we impose the idea on other. You, you know, this is the, you, you should do this, you should do that. You know, but sometimes you are not that person. There's a sometimes when we we try to when someone you know and someone being nasty to, or someone you know being not nice to you or that we try to understand. We try to understand the problem, why the person behaves that way. But 
not to judge the person you should, you know. Sometimes we ask ourselves if we are in the person's, you know, if we are, if we are, if we put ourselves in the person's shoes, and we might do the same thing too. It's very easy that we judge that, you know, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. And we try to understand, you know, understand the problem, you know, and not to try to get rid of the problem. We can never get rid of the problem. This is part of life. You know, actually, problem itself doesn't create suffering. Actually, the suffering is come from how you relate, how we react to your problem. You can never free of you know problem. Life is like that because we think that is a problem because things don't happen according to our plan. To you know, have, because things happen not according to our plan. You know, we not what, what this is not what we want. This is not the results I want. That side is no good, it's bad. This is how we judge, you know, and, we, and also we judge others. And it, sometimes we attach our own views and we impose on others like, how other people should behave, how, what you should do. That's why like, when someone made me say, this is the last thing you should do to discipline that person. Sometimes encouragement, support and understanding to understand why they make me sick, rather than to think that it's, it's wrong, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Because we are not that person, if you are, you know, if we are in the same, you know, what's the same things that happen to us, we also might have the same reaction. But it's very easy to judge, you know, because we are not that person, you know. There's something that, it's okay, you know, someone make me sick, we also, be able to embrace our own mistake. It's okay, mistake. Sometimes making mistake is not a bad thing. You know, it's part of our life. It's part of our transformation. It's I used to. I, I like. To, I, I, I I I like to use to give the simile of a butterfly. When the when the butterfly, when they look back, when the butterfly never look back. You know, at the caterpillar in shame. The same too. We don't look our look back our past in shame, because this is part of our transformation. Because that moment, you know, that that time we are not we, our level is only that you know we don't know better. But then as we as we learn from it, isn't it? So they say whatever we make any mistake, okay, what you have learned from it, I, it's like my my, my grand my grandson, as uh, he made mistake. So normally, you know, first thing you know, I ask you know like. Even my son, I said, what you have learned from it? Yeah. That is, then, this is how, you know, that we, we learn from it and we grow. So this is how we, like, it's just like the butterfly, it's part of the transformation. And they grow into a beautiful butterfly, you know. Yes, you know, the, like the butterfly will not look at the caterpillar, or you look so ugly, you know. And, but this is part of the transformation. That time, you, you don't know better, you know. That this is how... They said the, the practice is actually you have to you have to go back to the cause. You know, sometimes when we suffer, we investigate why I feel this way. We investigate because the, there are three three things that you know people will feel everything in life. First one, complain about everything. The second one, blame others for the suffering and never have a, not grateful at all. Sometimes. Being grateful, gratitude is a key to open the fullness of life. But when you get, when you have the gratitude, it's always enough and even more, isn't it? It's always good enough. It's always full. But if you don't have the gratitude, it's always not good enough. And also sometimes, you know, when, when you don't have that, that, that quality, and sometimes people have very strong sense of entitlement. Very strong as this. The, se the strong sense of entitlement, entitlement is come from the sense of self. Like, you know, you, I, I deserve that. Like, sh others should serve me, you should serve me. And then you should be nice to me because I'm, I'm special, I'm good, you know. And, and that's because that you, you have the entitlement that you entitle that. Rather than just being grateful, have gratitude, you know. Sometimes we tend to take it for granted. And it's the, actually, if, if you have that, that quality, and that should be very happy, easily satisfied. And being happy is one of the secrets. Also, you, know, the, the, being, you have the gratitude, and you can develop that throughout 
even in your daily life, sometimes even morning when you have your breakfast, and you can reflect that the food that you eat, you know, that other beings contribute towards that, you know, and how lucky we even have food to eat, and they may think of people that you know have don't have enough food to eat, and or they don't even earn enough, you know, you know to to survive. And then so sometimes we take it for granted, you know, that then when we have that, so everything is good enough. You know, it's not sometimes you always look for things is better, more. Even sometimes your mind becomes when 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 you constantly look for something more and not not good enough. Even you are peaceful, also you think that is not enough. You want more peace, isn't it? That is a common question people like to ask. You know, oh, when I meditate, oh, I become very peaceful, and then. What's the next thing I should do? I said no next, <laughs> because the moment you next, then you're not you're no longer happy, isn't it? You no longer just being present. Your mind already you looking for something else, you know. And this is sometimes you always go back to the to the cause, you know, to look at the cause, the source, or what leading up to that, what causes the suffering, you know. Then you know not to to blame others for our own suffering. And then also like complain like you know like, like as if that we 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 are not the one who responsible for our own action. That's why one of the chanting we used to chant. So for a manasik today is opposite. Normally we chant we chant the ten uh ten 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 reflection for those who gone forth. You know those who gone forth. One of that is that we are the owner of our own karma, each of our karma. And really, uh, abide and supported by a karma. Whatever karma I shall do, for good or for ill, so I will be the heir. So we are the one who responsible. But we tend to because sometimes when we blame others, we make ourselves feel better, isn't it? Like not my fault, you know. Blame others, and and also this is very common. Like people sometimes people like to come and like they say, oh, I'm very, you know, I'm not, I can't decide, you know. I, I'm a bit confused. I don't know what to do, and they, they themselves do want to make the decision. Then they come to me. They 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 expect that I help. I they expect that I will help them to make the decision. But normally, I throw the ball back to them. I said, "You make the decision," because it's very easy. Like if if they come to me, ask me to help them to make the decision. So anything go wrong is member Hasapanya's fault, not their fault. <laughs> it's easy, isn't it? <laughs> so I don't know. You have the responsibility. This is your, you know, you know. You, you this is so. You have the responsibility for your own action. Is so we don't blame others for our suffering, and also we have to understand. You know, understand. A like problem. You know, always life. You know, that is part of life. You know, sometimes you think the other family or they always no problem, so good, isn't it? But you never know. So that's why I keep telling people that it says when 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 you have problem, tell yourself that it's normal. I say sometimes I some of the nuns ask me, why sometimes you always I just whatever happened you just say that okay well okay. <laughs> Then I say. I said, "What do you what what what?" I said, "What do you expect from me?" I said, "To me, is that whatever goes wrong is normal. So if everything goes smooth, it's a bonus. So then they said, 'I'm expected when when things goes wrong when they come and tell me, you know, you know when you have big monastery, you have the maintenance and tell me, oh, this is not working, that is not working. Okay, well, I said, okay, you can, uh, 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 you know, contact." A, As a trader to come and fix it. What can you do, isn't it? If anything go wrong, you just fix it. You know, you getting upset is not going to help in any way. You know, so and then they say, but I say because I I understand that by worrying about it, get getting upset about it is not going to help me at all. I remember when I decided to become a nun, so I have to I have to sell my things. Because I'm doing a bakery business, I have to sell all the machine. But then I stop everything. Then, then you have to pay renter. But yet you are not doing any business. But you can't last too long, isn't it? Then, then, then I haven't think of a a way to to resolve this. Then I was thinking, okay, 
I can't think of a way to resolve it. Then I, I was planning to go to Thailand and my family, they really, really mad at me. They said, I never come across a people like you, haven't solved your problem, and then you go away. And then I told, and I told, I, and I told, I told them, I said, if I, if worrying will have, if worrying will help you to resolve my problem, I will worry then. Because it's not going to help me. Because sometimes, you know, you just put it aside. It's not that I, I don't want to resolve it, but sometimes, you, 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 you take a break, you put it aside. Then after when you have more clarity, you become more peaceful and calm. And actually you know, you know, you know the answer. Sometimes you know, we know the answer. So when, when people come to me, they say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of, you know, indecisive. I don't know what to do. I'm really confused. So I said, when you're confused, don't try to make any decision. Try to find a place to meet yourself as peaceful as you can. Just relax. Have a cup of tea. Then when you relax, you know when you relax, one of the, the, the practice is actually is very good for, for, for most people. Sometimes some people, even for people with mental problems, they, they can't really meditate because, because they can't distinguish what is real, what is not real, what is imagination, what is not imagination. But the body contemplation is very good. So you just sit down, relax your body. You know, when you relax your body, how do you feel? You feel peaceful, isn't it? When you relax, just relax, just sit there. So sometimes you don't need to rush, you just sit there, spend a bit of time, just relax, aware of your body, feeling sensation, aware of how you feel. So when you feel any tightness in your body, you just tell yourself, relax, just relax. Then when you relax, you, you actually, it's a natural process. You naturally feel peaceful and calm, isn't it? But not to sit, to sit down there. Oh, you know, sometimes people try very hard to focus and using willpower. I can tell you, and that's, that's why I, I know one lady, she told me, She's, she said she, she, she went for a retreat. And then every day they were announced how many percent people got Nimitta. But she didn't get Nimitta. And she tried harder because she find that I'm so stupid. Why, are you, why other people have Nimitta? Oh, I don't have Nimitta. That means I'm not, I'm stupid. <laughs> then she tried harder. The harder she tried was, and then she ended up, she can't breathe at all. Because she tried to to get nimitta, a nimitta happened by itself. You know, when you that is a nimitta, actually the reflection of your mind. Your mind become peaceful, bright. You know, and it's happened by itself. When your mind become really still, you know, when your mind is at the, you have the purity, and that is a reflection. It's happened by itself. You cannot make it happen. And she tried to make it happen until she have chest pain, and then she cannot breathe. And then I said, you can't, you, you know, I, and I told her, I said, you don't meditate to get nimitta. Sometimes you don't meditate to, to become peaceful. You become peaceful naturally by itself. You know, when you relax, when you let go, you know, when you come to a place of acceptance, accepting how you feel, the more you fight, you know, the, the, the worst, you know, it's okay. I remember there was a lady and she, she said to me that when she, when she was depressed, she find that she said that it's like she shouldn't feel depressed because I got a good job, my family is good, my children, everything good, but I feel depressed. But she said that she, I, I, she shouldn't feel depressed. I said, it's okay. If you feel depressed, if depressed come, depression comes, depression go. The moment you just let it be, actually it will stop. I said the more you, 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 you identify yourself that you know, I shouldn't feel this way, you know, I shouldn't have a depression, the more you fight, actually you reinforce your tendency. It's okay, come to a place of acceptance. Sometimes how we feel, it's okay, this is how we feel. Because you're not enlightened, isn't it? If, 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 if you are enlightened, you're not here. Like people said to me, I still have anger, so I look at the person. Okay, what do you expect? I said, if you have no anger, so you are not here, isn't it? You are fully enlightened, you're not here. So I said, it's okay. It's that 
it's just that when that baby, when you have in when you you have enough clarity, you be able to see like the Buddha said that you, that you 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 are fully mindful. You when there's a any 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 defilements kick out, and then you don't because when you pay attention to that, it will grow. It feed it. So that Buddha called this unwise attention. So then we have wise attention. They say sometimes when you do, you know, it's okay to do meta. It's okay to think of may 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 I will be well and happy. May others be well and happy. But it's just that you 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 that you got the like wise attention. Pay attention to something that is. Awesome, that is skillful, but not to force yourself. You know, that some people, you know, they force themselves. You know, that I have to, I have to have meta. I have, to be, I have, lo- I should, I should have loving kindness. They said there was a, a one of my relatives told me because she tried to do loving kindness because of she have been she gone through a lot of abuses from her ex husband and she was divorced and then. Then, but she told me that I don't want to carry this with me, and I do not wish to meet him again in my next life. Because sometimes you cannot let go. Sometimes, like you know, you have so much anger towards that person. She said, "No, I don't want to 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 carry that with me." And it's also it's not really good for her own well being. Then you know, she said. How I try to do matter, but I can't. The moment I sit down, I try to send loving kindness, and all sorts of terrible thing have you know, he had done to me. It all comes out. How can I have loving kindness? Then I told her, okay, you don't have to have loving kindness towards him, and then you send loving kindness towards yourself. May I have no ill will towards him. May I have loving kindness towards him. May I be able to let it go, you know. That is you being kind to yourself, you know. May I be able to have loving kindness. It's not that I you should have loving kindness to him. No, may I, you know, be able to have loving kindness to him. May I be able to forgive him. So sometimes I people force themselves. I should, for it's okay. You can't forgive. Fine. You don't have to force yourself. Sometimes you know. I mean, theory everybody understand, isn't it? Very easy said and done, isn't it? Let go, let go. Oh, forgive, you know. Very easy. You give, you give advice to people. Oh, let go. Like you know, one of this. I remember one lady said, "Let go, lah." <laughs> so easy, let go. <laughs> Actually, it's very easy to set, isn't it? But then, you know, and then it it takes a, you know. Actually, the letting go itself also, it's also gradually. You know, it's not happen overnight. It takes time. You know, sometimes like you, acceptance is also letting go. Sometimes we can let go a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. The more we can let go, then we have a little bit more happiness. Like Ajahn Chah said, you know, you have more happiness. Then, then you have if you can let go completely, you can forgive completely. Then you have complete happiness and more happiness. But actually, you can see. Your 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 whole mind has to increase. You can see that you're no longer so disturbed. They say sometimes people ask me, how can how do I know whether I have any progress in my in my practice? You know, like sometimes you look at yourself like every day you meditate the same old breath again. It seems like no 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 progress. Then. Then, because sometimes you think that you sh- you you want to attain the certain stage, you know. Then I said, then I told I told this person, I said very easy. I said, you know, you 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 check, you know, you look back, you know, you check. I said, like for certain things in the past, would you, your mind get disturbed long time? Like for example, it takes takes you like you know almost two weeks, you know, to 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 be able to let that go. But now it takes you few days. Or maybe one or two days. So I and then I ask this person. So how much suffering you have lessened? Oh yeah, but sometimes we think that this have to go away. It won't go away immediately. Like like I said, the ball spinning. It won't go. It's still there. You know. Sometimes sometimes it seems like some even we have some people like for certain some of the the emotion that's you know haven't been comes up for a long time. And sometimes when the condition is there, it still occasionally it still come it still comes out again, but because it still it still not completely still you know it still the the underlying tendency is not completely 
eradicated, you know, it's still a little bit is there. So it's just like the, the defilements is just a like layer of defilements. So when 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 we have enough clarity, we we'll be able to see that, you know. Then we work on it. Then after that, we go to the next. They say sometimes when you practice, at some stage you feel happy, peaceful, you know, peaceful. Then after that, you hit another level because as your mind become more refined, you be able to see the more refined defilements, the things that you think that is not there, but actually is there. It's just because our defilements is not refined enough to be able to see that we have this certain habitual pattern, we react in a certain way that normally causes suffering. Because it's, it's a subtle, it's very subtle. So if your mind is not refined enough, you're unable to see. So that's why when you practice and your practice get deeper and deeper and you deepen, you actually you'll be able to see more on a more refined level. It's just like, you know, like you can't see any, 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 you know, bacteria and things, you know, you can't see. You know, like in our physical eyes, we can't see. But then we put under the microscope, you can see, isn't it? All the things that in our physical eyes, we cannot see. The same thing we have the farmers. Sometimes there's a gross defilement we can see, but the refined one, we can't see. But this one, sometimes people say, oh, I don't know that I have this defilement. Then I say, sadhu, sadhu. Because I said, be able to see your own defilements, you also have to have wisdom to see that. So if you wake up wisdom, you can't. It's the most difficult things to see is your own defilements. It's very easy to see other people's mistake, isn't it? Very easy, you know. But your own, you can't see. But I said, if you be able to see your own defilements, that means you have enough clarity. You have enough wisdom. You only have enough wisdom only. You can see your own defilements. You can see that, you know. This is sometimes this actually the practice is very simple, you know. Just investigate and go back to the to the cause of the source, you know, you know, our what causes our suffering, you know, to 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 be able to when we when we when the mind become more more have more and more clarity and we'll be able to see our underlying tendency. Sometimes like we are not angry, it doesn't mean that we have no anger. But the underlying tendency is there. So when the condition is there, it's happened. You see, like I was thinking that I have no, I'm so happy, I'm so peaceful because no, no, no one press my button. But someone press my button, I'm really mad, like almost want to strangle that person. You know, that doesn't, you know, they said sometimes like that moment you have no anger doesn't mean that you have, you have no anger, you don't angry that moment, but because the condition is not there. So things happen according to multiple causes and conditions. So the condi when the condition is there, so that's right, so always go back to the cause. So when the condition is not there, so you were not there, so why we are here? So because of we've been born, you know, the condition is because, you know, we have this body, you know, when, when we get sick, we grow old. Why we got sick, we grow old? Because we have the body, you know. And this is the condition is there. When the condition is there, things happen. You know, so it grow old. It's natural. It's a natural process, you know. Everyone grow old, isn't it? And, 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 and it's a natural process. And I think, they said the Buddha said, is this is a, a gradual, gradual training. It's very gradual. And sometimes, like, you know, you, you, you don't see yourself, you think that you have no progress. Actually, you are progressing. And it's happened naturally. Yeah. And then, you know, so that's why sometimes when I look back, you know, and, 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 and how, how you don't look the same, isn't it? When you, when you are now and you look back, you know, then sometimes I know, I, I remember, I remember I, 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 one time, one time I was being locked out. I've been locked up in a kuti. I fall, I, somehow I, I close the sliding door and then the, 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 the latch drop and it's been locked and I can't get in. I can't get in, so what am I going to do? I can't get into my kuti. I was outside. 
Then I then I remember oh when I was uh, when I was still a junior, not not young junior nun. I <laughs> that time I was you know that time a junior nun. There's a uh, that time I was quite very skinny, very skinny, not like now. So that's uh, I also don't know when I started to grow fat, and uh, I don't know whether when Book Jotika remember when I started to grow fat, and then <laughs> then I cannot remember when I grow fat. Then I remember oh. I remember last time I've been locked up from the nun's cottage. I I went I went through and then you know we have the bathroom. The bathroom, the, the window is so small. And then I see oh they didn't they didn't they didn't they didn't they didn't lock the they didn't they didn't close the window. That I, I managed to climb into that window, I squeeze in and go in. Then I go into my my, my kuti at the at the back of the bathroom. I was thinking, can I squeeze in? I was thinking and then I, I was thinking I better don't. I, I if I get yeah, I was thinking if I, I if I try to get in, I get stuck in between. <laughs> then can't come out. Then I have to call SES, you know. SES you call it as a state uh, emergency service. You know, they come. Then I said then I told them the next day the newspaper will come up. This booth this this Bad Buddhist nun, been stuck in, the, been stuck in the in, in the window. I said, you know? <laughs> I said, I better don't. I said, I better don't. I said, I better don't. No, actually, it's, it's you know sometimes we just accept it. I said, okay, you know, being fat is fine because I I don't exercise as much, but of course we we I talk more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, you know wherever you go, sometimes people like want, like to ask you to give talk. You know, I remember once, you know, when I I I, I went to our branch monastery. Uh, I went to my branch monastery. So, the one Vietnamese couple sent me to the uh, airport. She 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 took me to the airport. You know, so give me give me a lift to the airport. So of course, in the car, they take the. Great opportunity, golden opportunity. Keep asking me questions. It's two hours, right? I talk for two hours <laughs> until when I arrive at the airport, my throat was so dry. <laughs> Talking for two hours, you know, <laughs> and I ask all sorts of questions, you know, because I think oh, I'm very rare. I can, I can, I can give a lift to a nun, you know. Okay, they take the golden opportunity, ask me all sorts of questions, you know. and yeah. And uh, they, they say sometimes like, yeah, then this is part of you know that to me like okay I think it this is part of my job you know I will not say oh terrible you know you know why this happened to me why there's so much so many questions to ask you know I said okay it's you know because I accepted that this is part of my job that is part of my job you know to to to, to sometimes like for example like. Like in my position, like sometimes I still have to be invited to attend some of the ceremony. Like normally they invite the Buddhist society, and sometimes Ajahn Ram go. If Ajahn Ram can't go, then I have to go. We have to represent Buddhist society to attend. Like sometimes like swearing of the 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 premier, you know, go to the parliament house. Actually, of course, I don't really like to go this. This, you know, after that they have reception, you know. Then of course, and you know, you have to stand there. You know, you don't know everyone. Then you have to smell. Mm, hello, how are you? <laughs> and then I, I find it so fake. You know, you have to have the fake. Hello, but you don't know anyone. And actually, I want to go, but 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 sometimes somehow you still have to. You know, sometimes you still have to entertain a little bit. Then, but this is part of my job. If I keep thinking, if I keep fighting, you know, I don't become a nun to do this. Da da da. Then the more I think about it, to me, I was, to me, I just think this is how you develop a a a a positive attitude. So you look at it in a way that this is my my life that I give. I live a life of giving. You know, it's a it's a service to me. Like for example, we do have like 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 just last last week, and people dying, and just call that you know they want to the the they want to have a Buddhist nun to go there and chant. So I just go like to me, I don't, why they call me? You know, I, to me like to me, I take this as the opportunity to give to live a life of giving a service. You give, then you then then it's okay. You know, this is I understand this is part of my job. When they, whoever in the position, this is you have to do this. You know, this is your, your part of your job. 
you know like for me sometimes I have to listen to people problem I'm not only listen to the the to the uh, sometimes a lay supporters program I also have to listen to the nuns program you know <laughs> sometimes I have to spend hours talking to uh, because it's natural life is you have ups and downs whether you are a lay person, you are monastic, you know. And then sometimes my job is that I have to I have to be I be there, you know, to to motivate them, to give them, you know, encouragement and keep them going. And I don't judge like, you know, I don't judge them because for me to me I'm only focused that my job is to to, to support, to give encouragement, to be there for them, to keep them going, you know. And this is my this is part of my you know uh, it's part of my duty as a preceptor as a teacher this is part of my fulfilling my uh, uh, duty and I'm I'm because I I choose to live this life you know of course at the beginning I find it a bit you know uh, uh, I remember at the beginning I was thinking that oh I don't I don't ordain to become this to do all this thing you know. Then actually the moment when I think of Ajahn Ram, actually he did more than I do. <laughs> then I feel much better. <laughs> Truly when I think, oh he do more than me, you know, then mm, it's, it's not too bad, you know. <laughs> this, is, this is how you develop your attitude. You always look at something, you know, that, you know. Actually, it's not that, it, it's not that you've been uh, being live in denial, but Actually, you, you change your attitude, you know. You, actually, you don't change the fact, but you change your, 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 how you relate to the situation. You know, you, you, you can't change the situation, but the way you relate, then you change. And the way you, the, you change your way of looking at things. For example, when my mom passed away, so at the beginning, I feel, I, I feel that it's a loss. I lost my mom. Then I think it takes me a few months that you know I still occasionally I think of him I still have a bit uh, grieving you know. Then one day I just I just suddenly stop like I just tell myself hey actually I'm so lucky I'm so blessed because I have my mom for all these years and she's been such a nice person and then the moment I start to reflect on all her good qualities actually I was very happy. Then since then whenever I think of my mom. I never feel sad anymore, because because I, I feel that I'm so blessed, and I must have done lots of good karma to deserve someone like my mom in my life. You know, but I look at it that way. Yes, physically she's not, physically she's no longer here, but her qualities is remain in my heart. That's why I keep telling some parents, you know, I said that it's not how much money you leave behind for your children is really matter, but make sure that you know that the best thing that the best inheritance is that to 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 have the good qualities like for example you have the you develop the good qualities and be the be the example set the, the example teaching by example and then when they think of your good quality they rejoice they're happy isn't it that is the best best gift you can give not not you know, not how much you know to to, to teach them to be a a, a, a a better person, you know. And that is much more important than how much money you give them. You know, that is the best inheritance you can give, you know, teaching by example. I remember like we have the uh, when I went to Melbourne we, we had this uh, 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 the Buddhist summer school, we have the open opening uh, uh, panel, you know, that, that talk about AI. Uh, can AI replace human beings, especially in the spiritual path? You know. Then I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember. That's what I answer. I said like AI, they can't. Like the, the the best teaching is teaching by example. It's not what they said. You know. We can say it beautifully. You know. Many people can talk. So I call that talker. So it's a it's a it's a talker. So they say sometimes like you know, not you not only be able to 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 talk the walk, but you be able to walk the talk, you know. But AI can't do that, isn't it? They say you cannot replace, you know. They say the this is the best teaching, the teaching by example. Even the own children, if truly is that you 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 know, 
So that's make sure you don't do it. That's why sometimes sometimes people said to me that oh because oh yeah the airbag you know yeah the head you know in then yeah the boss then you can do whatever you like. I said the other way around because I have many pay supply looking at me. I have to be more careful, you know. Hey, they 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 can see what I do. You see, she also know. <laughs> <laughs> they say sometimes I I make sure that I don't do it when you know when when I ask someone not to do it I make sure I don't do it. They say sometimes I like in our monastery because we have different we come with uh, it's a very di- diverse uh, different and uh, ethnic group and different nationality. So we have a Sri Lankan, we have Malaysian, we have Hongkies, and we have people from England, we have Australian, we have Thai. And some of who I forgot, uh, Indonesia, Indonesia <laughs> Canadian, you know, of different background. Then, then they said one thing that we are not allowed to speak your own dialects or your your own native language. And that's why even though some, they said sometimes I getting really worse, you know, like uh, uh, even though I come from my family, we speak Cantonese, you know, and last time I can speak Mandarin, but now I getting worse and worse, you know. And because I have to make sure I don't say it, I don't speak, you know. Because you tell people don't do that, you know. Then you do it. Even some, 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 some of the we have one of the Malaysian nuns. She can speak Cantonese. Then even privately, I don't speak Cantonese with her because you know why? Because sometimes you forget. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get into habit, you forget the other person is there because it's not very nice. You have other people that don't understand your language. Actually, it's very rude because people complain to me like oh, so, so and so. You know, they speak their own language and they speak their own dialect. You know, and it's very rude. Then I have to I have to announce like especially work meeting. You know, or or a, a, a sangha meeting. I have to say no dialects, no other language. The main. Language you use is English, okay? <laughs> Make sure that people understand what you speak. That's why I myself have to be careful. That's why I don't speak. It's not because I, I don't want to speak because they say sometimes I, I come back, okay, sometimes I, I, to, to lay people I can speak. But with the, with amongst the nuns, I try not to because you, you get into the habit you forget. You forget the other person. Other person is there. Then I'm the one asking people don't do it. Then I'm I'm the first one who do it, <laughs> and people won't listen to you. You know, they say sometimes you always see why. You know, like uh, there was a late there was a man said to me that oh my my children don't listen to me. I keep telling them what they should do. They don't listen to me. I said. I said you have to find out why they don't listen to you. They must have a reason, isn't it? Why they don't don't listen to you? Maybe the way you said, you know, you have to change, you know, the way you said it, the way how you talk to to your children, how the way you said it. I said maybe you change your way of say, it, rather than pick, rather than you know, keep pointing out the mistake, but you point out the things that they have do it well. You just okay, encourage them. Okay, you you know, well done. You know, good job. You tell them. Yes, I did. I tell them. This is the way you should do. <laughs> Missing the point. <laughs> no, I said like the Buddha said, have to be like right speech, pleasing to your ears, isn't it? If you have very you nice voice, very gentle voice, you say it nicely, people will listen to you. But like he come with like like you know authority, you know this is the way, you know. And then I said you know maybe you have to change your way to say it. They said yes, I did, <laughs> I did. When they do something right, I said, "This is the way you should do." <laughs> so missing the point, missing the point. That's why I say you always have to find out why the cause. They say always go back to the source, you know, put in the right condition. Then things happen by itself. So you don't have to worry that you cannot get enlightened. You get enlightened if you put in the right causes. You know, being a virtuous person, being a generous person, you know. Practice meditation, you know, it's a happen. You know, leap, you know, then you know, then you know, develop more clarity and have um, awareness, be able to see your underlying tendency. So, so once your underlying tendency, once the condition is not there, is removed, 
and then you no longer coming back. If not, then it's a the dependent origination because it's the condition is there. The things happen, isn't it? When the condition is there, it's not happen. So they say sometimes if you want to get enlightenment itself, is a natural process, you know. So whatever we have done in the past is okay. It's part of our transformation. We don't we don't have to feel sh you know. We don't have to look back our past you know, in shame. That is part of our transformation. It's on different level. You know, that time we don't know better. It's just I used to tell people like no one born as a parent. Isn't it? Doesn't mean that you become a parent, you automatically know what to do. We learn as we go along, isn't it? We make mistakes. It's fine. This I used to tell people, no, always forgive your parents. Even there, you know, because it's not that natural that you want to become a parents, you know what to do. We, we, you, we also, as a parents, also you learn as you go along, isn't it? And you make mistake, and okay, next time we do it better. So it's okay to, so, so it's more important to be kind than to be right, you know. You should do this, you shouldn't do this, should or shouldn't, you know, or you shouldn't feel that way. It's okay, whatever we feel, we come to please accept that this is how I feel and it stops very quickly you know so sometimes if you feel you feel you, you don't feel bright you feel grumpy then you think that it's wrong the more you think about it you become even worse become more grumpy I remember there was a lady and there was a, 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 a Meiji and then she was going on a retreat then I said okay wish you well may you have a peaceful happy retreat fruitful retreat I don't think I'm going to have a peaceful retreat. I'm so agitated at this moment. So I will be, have, I will be having an agitated retreat. Then I look at her and said, the most agitated person in the world still have a moment that are not agitated. Isn't it? So we have look at the moment that we don't always like that, isn't it? At times we're happy. At times we don't feel like that. We don't feel terrible. At times we feel really, you know, that we, we, we think of that moment, yes, at the, and this also will pass, part of life, you know. But we think it's, it's part of life that having problem is not a problem, isn't it? So because the problem itself won't cause you suffering, is how you relate, your attitude is important. So the problem is people thinking that having problem is a problem that is a main problem. <laughs> <laughs> and just like people, I just people think that I, you know, I have to forgive. If I can't forgive, I'm no good. I remember, you know, that this is how we be. We we, we have this idea. Then we we forcing ourselves. You know, it's okay. Come to a place of acceptance. We can't forgive. It's fine. I remember sometimes also we force other people to forgive us. Even though, how come you cannot forgive forgive me? I remember there was a lady told me that she said something that is. Actually, she doesn't understand the meaning and she went for a dancing class and then she was dancing. I know that's the dancing. So that's a, a, that he, her partner, a, another man, he's dancing. Then she was thinking that she's, uh, she want to praise this man that you're, you're, you're dancing very good. Then he said, oh, you're, you're, you're very good. You're flirting around, <laughs> flirting around. Of course, the guy was so upset, so offended because she doesn't understand what is flirting around. Flirting around is not a good word, you know. Of course, the, the guy don't want to dance with her anymore. Very angry. <laughs> and then he went then, then he went to apologize. Then he said, he still don't talk to me. Then I said, then still cannot forgive me. Then I look at her, why he should forgive you? I said, he doesn't, he don't want to forgive you. He sees his problem, not your problem. You done your job, you did your part. If she refused to forgive you, it's, it's the per person problem, it's not your problem anymore. I said, why people have to forgive you if they can't forgive the, the person business, isn't it? Then I, and I told her, why didn't you forgive him for not able to forgive you? <laughs> <laughs> so they said, it's always your attitude is important, how you look at it. So the, then you don't easily get upset, isn't it? Okay, you don't forgive me. Oh, I forgive you for not able to forgive me. Okay, then you feel better, isn't it? But if you're constantly thinking of, I really say sorry. This lady disturbed her for a few days, cannot sleep. And then, and then she come to me, you know, and, 
How come she? I already said sorry. I already apologized. I already said that I'm sorry. But this person refused to forgive me, and then she go on and on and on. And then I told her that why don't you look at it? That okay, you can't forgive me. Fine, I forgive you for not able to forgive me. Then you feel better, isn't it? So they said it's always come back your own attitude. They said happiness is a choice. You know, you choose if you choose to to suffer, go on and on. It's your choice. You, if you want to suffer, no one stops you, isn't it? I uh, said, so they say it's important your attitude. Always go back to the source, to the cause, you know, the condition, you know. It's like, the, like we keep doing the same thing and we expect to have different results. It's not going to have different results, isn't it? You know, we, we, we keep repeating, we keep reinforce our underlying tendency. So again and again, we have the same problem again. We have the same suffering again. They so always go back to the cause. Look at the condition. So when the condition is there, then you you if you keep feeding it, and we go back again and again. So it's nine o'clock already. Okay, it's enough. I think you can you you can't absorb anymore. Okay. So um, th thank you for listening and also. Thank you very much, okay. uh, Venerable. Is there any questions or comments? Yeah. Let us say Sadhu three times for the very insightful and inspiring talk by Venerable. Yeah. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Okay. Yes. So now we will open the floor for questions. Okay. Yes. Any yeah. questions or comments? We will. Oh, yes. 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 Any question? Namo Buddhaya Bhante. I have two questions. Okay. Uh, my first question is, you said to keep the practice simple, mm. but sometimes, uh, because previously I have this thought to keep it simple, but sometimes when I keep it too simple, I didn't learn enough like uh, the theoretical part of it, of the mm -hmm. Dharma. Mm -hmm. So I feel like then the practice becomes not so effective. Okay. So, what are your thoughts on that? Okay. Uh, do you want me to go on to the second question first? Or? Okay. okay, first question first. First okay. question. Sometimes the pro uh, problem is sometimes you, you, you have to have a, 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 a bit of a balance. Like sometimes, like, you know, that like, you know, later side, you, you have to have the instruction. Then, then you have to put into practice, follow instruction, put it into practice. But sometimes maybe you, you don't have enough instruction. It's also a problem. This is how sometimes the middle way. Sometimes people swing from, from one end to another too far. You know, when you tell them you don't do this, and they swing to the other end. You know, and and that's why sometimes yes, we said because sometimes people think too much. You know, they're thinking that oh maybe 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 now I feel angry. Okay, I should practice better. And afterwards, I should practice it. I should this. You know, then read so many books, and then they get more and more confused. And but then. Then, then you think, oh, keep it simple. Then also you have to have enough instruction. Get the enough instruction. This uh, keep it simple doesn't mean that you don't list, you don't follow instruction. You also have to have clear instruction. But it's a simple instruction. You know. This I, I remember there was a, a man when I was in Singapore, and he come he come up to me. He said to me, I hope that I hope that you don't get offended. So. Amen. Because I, 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 I've been I've been I've been I've been going through research of different religion and I find that Buddhism is the most confusing religion in the world. <laughs> so I said to him, You are right. <laughs> you are right. I said I said, of course it's confused. I said because I said Buddhism is that you, you have to it's a, I told him that Buddhism is a DIY religion. It's a DIY. You have to do it yourself. If you can just read instruction and you can just read books, uh, you can get enlightened. Uh, you don't have to practice, isn't it? Of course, you cannot understand just through re the the reading book, reading instruction. It's only give you. It just give you is a map. You know that you know this is you go through and then you go past. You will see this. You, you have the landmark. You know, but then. You you do you don't just sit there and look at the map. You have to, you have to walk the path, isn't it? That's why sometimes it's both is important. You have to have enough enough information, instruction. Then wow! But the problem is sometimes people thinking too much. 
walk halfway thinking oh maybe I, I should add, get another way and this is how they get it very they make it very complicated uh, maybe I should find shortcut you know detour here detour there and that is where people get very complicated rather than just simple follow the instruction but of course you have to have a very clear instruction have to have not in enough information is that, is that answer your question yes it answered and my second question will be uh, how will you advise a naturally or born i guess that's a word judgmental or perfectionist person mm -hmm. to have more loving kindness and compassion Okay. Because like there's, I guess it's myself as well, like um, you're so used to judge people, it becomes a habit and it's very hard to, mm -hmm. like it, it really happens naturally. So mm -hmm. how do you fight that programming oh, okay. and you know, yeah. Okay, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like for example, I used, to, I, I, used to, I, used to, I used to be very, you know, I, I can't stand like, you know, perfectionist and I can't stand myself even making a simple mistake because to me like, for last time I was thinking, mm, I'm so compassionate, I can forgive others so easily and I, I cannot forgive myself easily. Then I realized that it's come from my big ego sense of self because I easy to forgive others because they're stupid. They're not as smart as me. <laughs> okay, you make me say I forgive you, but then you cannot forgive yourself because you're supposed to be smart, isn't it? You're, you're so smart. Then they said. Then I realized that actually come from my my big ego. The bigger the ego, the easier you judge. But of course, it takes time. I remember that. You, actually, one of the things you really each time you catch yourself, you restrain. Like for example, like sometimes I get, you know, when the early days when I was a junior nun, and then sometimes we get tense to do to, to the, the, the shrine, you know, and arrange flower. So I always, that time I used to enjoy arranging flower. And then of course, it used to sometimes uh, make me really eyesore. You know, sometimes when you, when you, you, you know the flower you put, you know, to a side, you have to have mirror image. But some people, they're not mirror image, they, they, they go this side. <laughs> then I, I was sitting there maybe teaching, the flower go this side. <laughs> I cannot stand. I almost want to get up and pull it and put it, <laughs> and to put it that side. And I tell myself, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Then actually, sometimes you have to put in a bit of effort to restrain yourself. No, no, I'm not going to do it. Then slowly, slowly, I'm quite okay. Now I don't care what people do. <laughs> <laughs> because I, sometimes I, it's everything I want to be proper, like, you know, we call it OCD, you know, becomes like, it becomes like, oh, so obsessive, you cannot stand, you know, things have to be really, you know. I, you know, even I have my clothes, you know, the, the packs also have the same colour. <laughs> <laughs> And I see, see other people not tidy, can't stand, you know, like I really eyes off. And then, I, then now I, I, I just tell myself, no, 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 I, I restrain myself not to do it. Then I find it much better. And also one of the good things I find it very good is that you, you reflect on karma. So you reflect on karma, like some, like how you, so for example, when you, when someone being, you know, say something that you, you don't like it, you know, or you try to judge that person, why this person, you know, why this person behave this way, you know, they're terrible or whatever, then you reflect on the karma that actually this person, if the person being unskillful, he also responsible for his own action. Then when you reflect on that, you started to have developed compassion towards that person. Of course, it takes a period of time. It's not going to happen. It's not going to go away immediately. But I find that it's quite useful because um, I, when I was in when I was in Thailand, there was a lady, and come to uh, come to stay, and she's just so annoying. She follow me everywhere and complaining everything. You know, he said, "How come no the toilet so far? You have to walk so far. Can't you go to the bush? You know." I was, I was really, then I was just very patient, okay, I didn't say anything, and to a point that like, I really cannot stand, when she come to me and say, oh, I, I'm afraid to stay in my kuti alone, can I come and stay with you? No way, I said. 
Then that time I I I I really that time already up to my limit. I cannot stand already. Then I told to him. I said, "You crazy woman, go away." I said, "I don't want to talk to you." I said, to, "I said go away. I don't want to talk to you." <laughs> and then, you know, then actually the moment when I said that, I regretted. I said that it's not really nice to say that, but that time I already up to my limit. I can't stand, you know. Then I really scolded her, asked her to go away, you know. Then, uh, then it's very irritating. She even come to my kuti call me. I was meditating. She called me. That time I was still a lay person. She called me, ping, 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 ping. <laughs> oh. A great meditator, Yuan Jana. <laughs> I was sitting there. I was oh, actually every time I go out see him, ah, uh, I have to when I go back, ah, uh, my I have to take so long to be able to settle down. <laughs> then then I actually I reflect on her, you know, that on the karma and reflect that takes me a while. And then yes, yeah, it's, it's very irritating. And 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 then one day she come to me, you know. She come to me also call me and that time I I wasn't meditating then I I just because it's like you know in in Thailand that you you know that the kuti you have they have a stair you know quite high so I go out I stand there because I because she put her hand like that then I, because she's a bit not not it's a bit crazy she's crazy she put her hand like that talk to me I was thinking I don't know whether she got a knife to stab me <laughs> <laughs> so. So I didn't. I didn't really go down. I standing there. I say, "What do you want?" I ask her, "What do you want? Give me some. Give me some incense." So I went and give her some incense. Why so later? If not, I come and disturb you again. <laughs> I give her again. Then, and very irritating, you know. Then I just sit there, just sit with that, and then after that, until I calm down, then I reflect on karma a lot. Then actually, that's helped me a lot. Then it's very, very irritating. Even, even, even in the evening, even I do job when I when I'm doing something, she see me doing it. She said she she even use a hand to push me away. She want to make me angry because I know that she want to make me angry. Then I said no, I'm not going to get angry. But actually. I try. I, I restrain. I control myself. No, I'm not going to react. You know, she push me. Then I want to do this. Then I let her do. And then she see me do other thing. She drop this and go there. I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> then of course she's she's not only doing to me. She doing to other people too. Then she was asked to leave because of she she being quite destructive like this other paper. And then they, I didn't complain about her. But other people go to complain to the abbot, you know. Then she was asked to leave, but I didn't. I didn't complain about her. I just keep working with my reactions, my feelings, like the kind of agitation, irritation towards her. I feel so annoying. So I just, I just, you know, just stay with how I feel, you know, my my body sensation, and then after that, I reflect on the karma. Then, then started to to, to like. To understand, like actually, she also she also suffer that she's doing whatever she do, she be the she's she's will be she will bear the consequences of her own action. Then sometimes also one of the thing also I ask myself also is that if I were the person, am I do the same thing? Sometimes very easy to judge that you know that she didn't do it, but we. I use I use when I start to judge others. One of the things I used to ask myself: We all do the same thing. If I'm in the person, if I'm in the person position, then actually it's a good thing you ask. And when I ask myself like that, like that, when I ask myself, then I say, oh, well, I might, I might do the same thing though, because it's easy to to. To to judge us others that you shouldn't do this, you know. But then if you are if you are in the person position, you might do the same thing. And then another thing also is also helpful that sometimes some people irritate me and and you know press my button. So I just remind myself that you know to just develop the 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 the, the quality of gratitude. You know, thank you for giving me the opportunity to practice compassion forgiveness. So you take this as an opportunity to practice forgiveness. Then you, actually, 
those compassion and this quality actually it will not develop overnight. And then it slowly you can see yourself you get and soften, you know, you would you be less judgmental. And you can see that you've been judgmental actually you yourself also suffer because you get angry easily. Because when you judge others, you don't like it, you, you know, you don't feel good, you know. Then this is how then sometimes it's good that you learn to look at the good qualities. Turn turn around to look at the good qualities. They say gratitude is very good. Always look at the for example for example, you know, when you know when I remember when I, I sprained my anger, you know, a few months ago. Then when I when I spring my anger, then then I was thinking, okay, I at least I can walk. You know, it's always I always think of something that is good, you know. And then you feel much better. You know. So and actually you have to train your mind. When you train your mind, always look at the best in others and also start to appreciate yourself. Sometimes also partly you don't appreciate yourself much. They say sometimes you appreciate whatever you do, you uh, any any good action, any things that you, you, you have done, you appreciate yourself to rejoice in your own goodness. This is something the Buddhists always encourage. So does that answer your questions? Yes. Any more? Any more questions or comments? Okay. Uh, thank you, Ajahn. Uh, many thanks to Ajahn for this uh, meaningful talk on enlightenment and natural process. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gathered uh, Ajahn has uh, indicated a lot of Dharma, mm -hmm. uh, notably uh, wholesome and unwholesome karma, mm -hmm. skillful and unskillful, mm -hmm. unwise and unwise attention, mm -hmm. dependent origination. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I really interests me was uh, when Ajahn mentioned about the map and also the uh, landmarks. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be interesting that if Ajahn can reiterate what are the landmarks towards enlightenment. Okay. Thank you. So one of the landmarks. Okay. If people press a button, you're not angry. <laughs> If if you want to you want to test out whether people are enlightened or not, so you press the person <laughs> button, and then if the person get angry at you, definitely not enlightened. <laughs> because as you as you as you practice, as so your your sense of self, your ego gets smaller and smaller. Actually, you you don't easily you know, it doesn't matter it doesn't bother you what other people say. The bigger the ego. You you because of the sense of self is a if you have a big ego you you always concerned about what other, how people think of you what other people said about you you know and then you get hurt so easily the bigger the ego the easily you get hurt then you, when your ego is small you just don't care you know whatever you can say whatever you like you know when people have small ego you don't easily get upset. It's very easy. You want to want you want to we want to test someone whether they that they they enlightened or not. So you ups, you 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 press the person button and then you see whether they get angry. <laughs> if they don't get angry, okay. But some sometimes also sometimes sometimes maybe the person can suppress a little bit, <laughs> you know. But eventually when you always with the person like the Buddha said, you know how to judge a person if you 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 know. You stay long enough, you be able to see the person behavior. So that's why it's those that they, they, they behave like they are they are so extraordinary. So they are definitely not enlightened. Like even during Buddha's time, like so many people, the people, some people that met Buddha, they don't even know the Buddha is in front of them. So actually, the more you know, those enlightened one, they actually they are more humble, you know. They don't, they don't, you know, they were not like, you know, I'm, I'm special, I'm extraordinary. 
No, they're very humble because of that. They don't have ego. They don't have the sense of self. So that's why if during Buddha's time, if Buddha's in front of of them also, they don't know that he's a Buddha. So is that answer your question? <laughs> Somewhat, huh? <laughs> okay. Any more questions or comments? Maybe one last question. Okay. Good evening, Venerable. Uh, yeah, I'm quite interested in the word uh, pushing buttons, you know? uh -huh. because the more you live in a community with people, uh -huh. the more opportunities you, you get to get your buttons uh, pushed, uh, pressed, whatever. So that I, if there are people who like to just stay you know, quietly, uh, just meditating uh, a lot of times and don't come into contact with people, they'll find it more peaceful and all that. Are were they are they in a better advantage of being enlightened? You never know. You have to you have to stay with the person. It's just like I just I give you the example. Like early days, I always meditate a lot, and then so happy, so peaceful. Mm -hmm. Then because the condition is not there, mm -hmm. no one, no one, no one upset me. Then when someone upset me, I can see from from heaven to the, to the hell. <laughs> one time very happy, you know, like floating, you know, like just just so happy, you know, and then so peaceful, so calm. Because no no one no one upset me then until you know the moment someone upset me i was just then i realized i just i just realized that 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 i can see my own defilements then they said sometimes it's not a bad thing you know sometimes it's not a bad thing then actually this person is also my teacher and also i learned and then i can see my and i, I can see my own practice as i tend to overestimate you know, my practice, I think that my, my practice is that good, but actually I'm not that level yet. I still get easily, you know, get triggered and get upset, you know. Yes. Yeah, I just have a question. Um, you know, when you say that uh, this Nibbana is a natural process and all that, how do we tell, like, you know, and then you say that sometimes we try too hard, mm -hmm. but how do you tell what is too much or what is not? Like, uh, you know, how much do you meditate a day and like, do you push yourself? But sometimes when you don't push yourself, it is actually laziness, okay. you know? So how do you find that balance? Okay. Yeah. The balance is the middle way. That's why I used to tell people, yes, it's okay to have the goal, but also you have to be smart. You know, like sometimes, like for example, you know, like I tell people, yes, you can push a little bit, you can, you know, but you you don't push too hard. For example, if you be able to sit for half an hour, but then sometimes half an hour you always get up. Then, no, you stay for a little bit longer, maybe another 10 minutes or 5 minutes. It's more doable, isn't it? So then, if you be able to sit, you know, uh, 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 for 35 minutes, extra 5 minutes, effortlessly, no problem, no struggle, then you can increase a little bit more. It's just like, you, it's just like, it's just like for, for building your mental muscles, it's just like building your physical, you know, body muscles. It's just like you can set your goal, like weight lifting. 100 kilos, but you don't start with 100 kilos. That is a problem if you start with 100 kilos. <laughs> you start with 10. Smart, you know. Also be smart, 10. Then if you be able to lift 10 so easily, so you increase 5. Eventually you'll get there, isn't it? Because your muscle have, takes time to train, you have to take time to build up. Even your clarity, you know, because of the defilements, it takes time to wear out. So we should still challenge ourselves, but not so much. I mean, like, yes, in a more yes, gentle yes, way. Yeah, more but gentle still way. Must yeah, progress, yeah, must yeah. Try something more than yeah. just cruising yeah. along. Sometimes a little bit of effort is okay, but mm. some the problem is people too much, too hard. Like, Forcing themselves because when you force yourself too much, then you get actually you, you you agitate your mind, and then I know some people ended up they don't like to meditate anymore because they always in it because they force themselves like sit for three hours four hours. I remember someone tell me, I went for a retreat and then 
she she told me that I was admiring this person sitting so still and so you know and then sitting there for four hours and then she was wow, how come this person do that she, she was admiring this person and then after that and then she saw this person the moment the person get up wow, hitting mosquito like so angry <laughs> Before that, he was, she, she said, actually, she, before that, when she, before she saw that, she was admiring him. Like, well, how come she did that, you know? Half an hour was not moving, you know? Like, look so peaceful, you know? Then the moment he get up, and then you understand what state of mind. Like, you get so angry, hitting mosquito, you know? Then you know <laughs> the state of mind, you know? Then actually, it's not that peaceful. Then it's a bit too, you, too much, you force yourself, you know? Sometimes, okay, you can push, a, you get a little bit, a little bit, then, you know, until that you, you just like, you just like build, like bodybuilding, you know. It's good, it's okay to set the goal, it's okay to do that, but also you have to have the wisdom. But people sometimes that, the thing that, people think that, oh, okay, I set 100 kilos, then maybe if I, I, I each time I, I start with 30, then maybe faster. That's a problem. People think that people always run faster. Where you want to go? Why you want to so fast? <laughs> Let it happen. So they said also you have to. They said it's another thing that to have the wisdom, to to know your own limitation. To know how much you can. To to know your limitation is important. Like the Buddha said that you know how much we we can do, like. And rather than to push ourselves beyond our, our, our capability. So know your limits is also important and know your boundaries. All right. So once again, thank you very much, okay. Venerable Hasapanya and Virgil Dika as well for your wise teachings and inspiration.